revealed to us and the hope that is found only in you. In your immortal and eternal name we pray. Amen. The chair has examined the journal of the last day's proceedings and announces to the House the approval thereof. Pursuant to Clause 1 of Rule 1, the journal stands approved. The Pledge of Allegiance will be led by the gentleman from Minnesota, Mr. Stauber. Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The chair will entertain up to five requests for one-minute speeches on each side of the aisle. What purposes does the gentleman from California seek recognition? Without objection, the gentleman is recognized for one minute. Mr. Speaker, do we really want to give the president the power to declare foreign adversaries and then require a communications platform within them to be banned or sold to a government-approved owner? If there are data privacy concerns, we should warn consumers and trust them to make their own decisions. If there are propaganda concerns, we should defend the free and open debate that our First Amendment protects, confident that the best way to judge the truth from lies is to put the two of them side by side and trust the people to know the difference. The last thing we should do is take that power away from the people and give it to the government. The answer to authoritarianism is not more authoritarianism. The answer to CCP-style propaganda is not CCP-style oppression. Let us slow down before we blunder down this very steep and slippery slope. I yield back. Men from Massachusetts seek recognition. Without object objection, the gentleman is recognized for one Mr. minute. Mr. Speaker, President Biden, in my, in my opinion, has failed to comply with U.S. law by continuing to send U.S. military aid to Israel. Section 620I of the Foreign Assistance Act is very clear. It states, and I quote, no assistance shall be furnished under this act or the Arms Export Control Act to any country when it is made, when it is made known to the President that the government of such country prohibits or otherwise restricts directly or indirectly the transport and delivery of United States humanitarian assistance. That is what is happening in Gaza. Prime Minister, uh, Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu has made a deliberate choice to use food, water, and medicine as weapons against the people of Gaza. He has restricted and stopped the delivery of aid, including U.S. aid, from reaching suffering, starving civilians in Gaza. This is a violation of U.S. law. President Biden, use your leverage. No more U.S. military aid to Israel in contradiction of our own laws. Trucks of food and medicine need to start rolling into Gaza now. Please, please, Mr. President, use your leverage now. I yield back. For what purpose does the gentleman from Minnesota seek recognition? Ask unanimous consent to address the House in, uh, for one minute and to rise and extend my remarks. Without objection. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to honor Officer Paul Elmstrand, a Burnsville police officer killed in the line of duty. Paul was from North Branch, Minnesota, and I recently sat down with his loving parents to express my condolences. They described Paul as a devoted family man with a servant's heart. They talked about his passion for policing, which began when he was a member of the law enforcement club at Cambridge Isanti High School. Paul's parents said that he took his police oath seriously and was dedicated to his brothers and sisters in law enforcement. He was an excellent police officer, but it was his role of husband and father that gave him the truest joy. Paul married his high school sweetheart, Cindy, and together they had two beautiful children, uh, Maria and Mateo. My heart aches for Paul's entire family, especially his children. While they must now grow up without their father, may they always remember that he lived his life with integrity, honor, and courage. And may they always take strength from the fact that their father was a hero who put his life on the line in service of others. Minnesotans will never forget his sacrifice. And I yield back. For what purpose does the gentlewoman from Texas seek recognition? Without objection. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to celebrate one of my constituents 
Chef Victoria Elizondo. Victoria is a dreamer. She has came to the United States at the age of 12 with her parents. And last week, she sat in this chamber in the presence of the president as my honored guest at the State of the Union. Victoria was twice nominated for the James Beard Award for her restaurant, Cochinita Company. She is an artist in the kitchen whose heart knows no bounds, and that shows in her work. She has published a successful cookbook, Taco Tastic. She buys locally, hires fellow dreamers, and leads with kindness that is born in her field. Mr. Speaker, Victoria is an example of what is to means to dream and to dream big. She's an example of putting people over politics and dreams over draconian policies. She's why I'm leading the Dream and Promise Act, to give dreamers like her a roadmap to citizenship once and for all. Americans support dreamers and dreamers support America. Let's make it into law. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. For what purpose does the gentleman from New York seek recognition? Without objection, the gentleman is recognized for one minute. Mr. Speaker, with an estimated 170 million Americans using TikTok every single month, the app is dominating the social media landscape. And every single one of these users, including American children, agreed to the terms and conditions of the app, allowing TikTok to access all of their personal data on the user's phone. This is a significant national security risk as TikTok's parent company, ByteDance, is owned by the Chinese Communist Party, meaning TikTok is essentially operating communist Chinese malware. With every dance challenge and lip sync video, American users are unknowingly contributing to a vast surveillance apparatus, and the potential for abuse of this data is chilling, ranging from targeted advertising to espionage to intelligence gathering. Additionally, TikTok's pervasive influence among young Americans makes it an ideal tool for the CCP to propagate its narratives, shape perceptives, and advance its geopolitical agenda. In light of these alarming realities, decisive action is warranted to mitigate the risks TikTok poses to its current form, and that's why I'm urging my colleagues to join me in supporting H.R. 7521 to force TikTok to break up with the CCP. It's time to wake up and see the real national security risk at hand, and I yield back, Mr. Speaker. Gentleman yields. For what purpose does a gentleman from Ohio seek recognition? Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent to address the House for one minute and to revise and extend my remarks. Without objection. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to recognize Ms. Julia Sabin for her outstanding career and significant achievements for over more than 40 years. Ms. Sabin's exemplary leadership has supported meaningful progress at the J.M. Smucker Company a leading manufacturer of iconic brands including its namesake, fruit spreads, Jif peanut butter, and uncrustable sandwiches, which everybody loves. Known for frequently using the popular refrain, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. She has always led with a spirit of perseverance. In addition to her work at Smucker, Ms. Sabin consistently served those around her. While living in Ohio, she supported her local community as a board member for In Council with Women in Cleveland, and the Stan Highwood Hall and Gardens in Akron. Ms. Sabin also served on the board of Ventrac, a family company providing tractor equipment in Ohio. I want to thank and congratulate Ms. Sabin on her accomplishments and the contributions that have led to more of prosperous Ohio and wish her a happy and well-earned retirement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I yield back. Gentleman yields. For what purpose does a gentleman from California seek recognition? Without objection. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Forest Service has in its charge just under 200 million acres across this country. We need the Forest Service to engage with private industry to help take care of those lands. There is not enough money, even after the massive influx, when they bragged the other day at a hearing I had that they have more money now than they ever needed or than they ever had before, but they still need another 20 million to move one particular project. How is there enough money for them to do their job when they can't even do it now? We need the private sector to be able to access forest lands to be able to harvest because right now the U.S. is the number two importer of wood products. Why are we the number two importer of wood products when we have so much over inventory 
in our, our, especially our western states, where we burn hundreds of thousands, millions of acres every year, including a one million acre fire in my district just a couple years ago, as well as the campfires uh, killed 86 people five years ago. We need to put the Forest Service to work or we need to move them out of the way. The private sector is an important part of that. We need industry because the Forest Service is not and will never keep up with that. They need to get out permits, contracts, and allow this wood to be harvested in a sustainable, good way as the industry knows how to do. I yield back. Gentleman yields. The chair lays before the House the following enrolled bill. Senate, Senate 1858, an act to amend the Robert T. Stafford Disaster Relief and Emergency Assistance Act to establish a deadline for applying for disaster unemployment assistance. The general lady will suspend. Pursuant to Clause 8 of Rule 20, the chair will postpone further proceedings today on motions to suspend the rules on which a recorded vote or the yeas and nays are ordered or votes objected to under Clause 6 of Rule 20. The House will resume proceedings on postponed questions at a later time. For what purpose does the gentlewoman from Washington seek recognition? Mr. Speaker, I move that the House suspend the rules and pass a bill, H.R. 7521. The clerk will report. The gentlelady moves to suspend the rules and call up the bill as amended. Does the gentlelady move to call up the bill as amended? Move to call the bill up as amended? Yes. The clerk will report the title of the bill. H.R. 7521, a bill to protect the national security of the United States from the threat posed by foreign adversary controlled applications such as TikTok and any successor application or service and any other application or service developed or provided by ByteDance Limited or an entity under the control of ByteDance Limited. Pursuant to the rule, the gentlewoman from Washington, Mrs. Rogers, and the gentleman from New Jersey, Mr. Pallone, each will control 20 minutes. For what purpose does the gentleman from Kentucky seek recognition? Mr. Speaker, I rise to claim time in actual opposition to the bill. Is the gentleman from New Jersey opposed to the motion? Is the gentleman from New Jersey opposed to the motion? No. The gentleman from New Jersey is not opposed to the motion? The gentleman from Kentucky will control the 20 minutes in opposition. The gentlewoman from Washington is recognized. I ask unanimous consent that all members may have five legislative days to, in which to revise and extend the remarks and insert extraneous materials into the record on the bill. Without objection. Mr. Speaker, I yield myself such time as I may consume. The gentlewoman is recognized. I rise today in support of H.R. 7521, the Protecting Americans from Foreign Adversary Controlled Applications Act. Foreign adversaries like the Chinese Communist Party pose the greatest national threat of our time. TikTok access to 177 million American users makes it a valuable propaganda tool for the CCP to exploit. Over the past week, we saw in real time how the CCP controlled TikTok used its influence and power to force users to contact their representatives if they even wanted to continue using the app. And this is just a small taste of how the CCP weaponizes applications it controls to manipulate tens 
of millions of people to further its agenda. Today's legislation will end this abuse by preventing apps controlled by foreign adversaries from targeting, surveilling, and manipulating the American people. We have given TikTok a clear choice. Separate from your parent company ByteDance, which is beholden to the CCP and remain operational in the United States, or side with the CCP and face the consequences. The choice is TikToks. Companies controlled by a foreign adversary like the CCP will never embrace American values like the freedom of speech, human rights, the rule of law, and a free press. If given the choice, they will always choose the path for more control, more surveillance, and more manipulation. And in the case of TikTok, we wouldn't even know it. Today, we send a clear message that we will not tolerate our adversaries weaponizing our freedoms against us. I encourage my colleagues to support this bill, and I reserve the balance of my time. The gentlewoman from Washington reserves. The gentleman from Kentucky is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I know the sponsors of this bill are sincere in their concerns and in their effort to protect Americans. They've described the TikTok application as a Trojan horse, but there are some of us who feel that either intentionally or unintentionally, this legislation to ban TikTok is actually a Trojan horse. Some of us are concerned that there are First Amendment implications here. Americans have the right to view information. We don't need to be protected by the government from information. Some of us just don't want the president picking which apps we can put on our phones or which websites that we can visit. We don't think that's appropriate. We also think it's dangerous to give the president that kind of power, to give him the power to decide what Americans can see on their phones and their computers, to give him that sort of discretion, we also think is dangerous. Now, people say that this TikTok ban will only apply to TikTok or maybe another company that pops up just like TikTok, but the bill is written so broadly that the president could abuse that discretion and include other companies that aren't just social media companies and that aren't, you know, as some people would believe, controlled by foreign adversaries. Again, we're giving the president that discretion to decide whether it is controlled by a foreign adversary. There, was, there were some people who were legitimately concerned that this was an overly broad bill, and um, they got an exclusion written into the bill that I want to read. It says, the term covered company does not include an entity that operates a website or application whose primary purpose is to allow users to post product reviews, business reviews, or travel information and reviews. Why is this exception in the bill? Why did somebody feel like they needed this exception if the bill itself only covers social media applications that foreign adversaries are running? These and other questions we hope to answer in the course of this debate, and I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman from Kentucky reserves. The gentlewoman from Washington is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I yield 10 minutes to the gentleman from New Jersey, Mr. Pallone, and ask unanimous consent that he be permitted to control that time. Without objection. Uh, thank you. The gentleman from New Jersey is recognized. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I yield myself three minutes. Mr. Speaker, I rise in support of H.R. 7521, the Protecting Americans from Foreign Adversaries Controlled Applications Act. Big tech has transformed social media platforms into modern-day media companies. And unfortunately, these networks engage in invasive surveillance practices by collecting Americans' most sensitive personal data. Foreign adversaries also see access to Americans' data, communication networks, devices, and applications as the entry points to disrupt our daily lives and conduct espionage activities. And all of this endangers our national security interests. We have a long history of restricting our TV and radio airwaves from ownership by foreign governments and individuals due to the national security concerns that these arrangements pose. Social media companies should also face similar scrutiny. After all, while technology has evolved, the threat
threats are very much the same. And I also take the concerns raised by the intelligence community very seriously. They have asked Congress to give them more authority to act in narrowly defined situations. I believe this bill will do just that by addressing the national security risks posed by applications operated by companies controlled by foreign adversaries. While this bill establishes a national security framework that could apply to other applications, much of the public attention is focused on TikTok. The combination of TikTok's Beijing communist-based ownership and the fact that more than 170 million Americans use it, exacerbates its dangers to our country and our privacy. Laws in China allow the Chinese Communist Party to compel companies like TikTok to share data with them, whether the companies want to or not. And this means that the CCP has the ability with TikTok to compromise device security, maliciously access Americans' data, promote pro-communist propaganda, and undermine our nation's interests. This is extremely troubling. Beijing, China should not have the control over America Americans that TikTok gives them. It is my hope that if enacted, this legislation will force divestment of TikTok so that Americans will be able to continue to use this platform without the risk that it's being operated and controlled by Beijing, China. However, even if TikTok is divested, China and other foreign adversaries will still be able to acquire vast amounts of Americans' data. That's because we place no restrictions on data brokers who sell data to, to them, and that must stop as well. I look forward to the House considering next week legislation that I introduced with Chair Rogers that would stop this from happening. We must begin to hold big tech accountable for transforming the information superhighway into a super spreader of harmful contact, invasive surveillance practices, and addictive and damaging design features, all with the goal of collecting more data. We must enact a comprehensive data privacy bill so that we finally give Americans control over how their data is used and collected. So I want to thank Representative Christian Morthy and Gallagher for their bipartisan work on this bill, which unanimously passed out of the Energy and Commerce Committee last week, and I urge my colleagues to support H.R. 7521, and I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman from New Jersey reserves. The gentlewoman from Washington is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield a minute and a half to the gentleman from Wisconsin, Mr. Gallagher. Thank you. Uh, TikTok is a threat to our national security because it is owned by ByteDance, which does the bidding of the Chinese Communist Party. We know this because ByteDance leadership says so and because Chinese law requires it. This bill therefore forces TikTok to break up with the Chinese Communist Party. It does not apply to American companies. It only applies to companies subject to the control of foreign adversaries defined by Congress. It says nothing about election interference and cannot be turned against any American social media platform. It does not impact websites in general. The only impacted sites are those associated with foreign adversary apps, such as TikTok.com. It can never be used to penalize individuals. The text explicitly prohibits that. And it cannot, cannot be used to censor speech. It takes no position at all on the content of speech, only foreign adversary control. Foreign adversary control of what is becoming the dominant news platform for Americans under 30. This is a common sense measure to protect our national security. I urge my colleagues to support this critical bipartisan legislation. The gentlewoman reserves uh, from Washington. I'll now recognize the gentleman from New Jersey. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield three minutes now to um, Mr. <laughs> the gentleman from uh, Illinois, Mr. Roger Christenworthy, who's the Democratic sponsor of the bill. Thank you, Chair Pallone. Thank you, Mike Gallagher, my partner on this bill. Thank you to Kathy McMorris-Rogers. Uh, thank you to all the members of the Select Committee. First, this bill is not a ban, and it's not about TikTok. It's about ByteDance. Let me tell you about ByteDance. ByteDance is a 100% owner of TikTok. ByteDance is controlled by the Chinese Communist Party. In fact, the editor-in-chief of ByteDance is the secretary of the Chinese Communist Party cell embedded at the very highest ranks of, of the company. And he has been charged with making sure that TikTok and all products of ByteDance adhere to, quote, correct political direction. This particular bill ensures that ByteDance divests itself of the vast majority of the ownership of TikTok. Our intention is for TikTok to continue to operate but not under the control of the Chinese Communist Party. 
Secondly, this divestment requirement is not new. It's not without precedent. When the app Grindr, a popular LGBTQ app, was acquired by a Chinese company and the United States government determined that sensitive data of LGBTQ members of the military and U.S. government officials got into the hands of the Chinese Communist Party, they required divestment. This happened quickly. Why? Because Grindr was a very valuable social media company. The same is true with regard to TikTok, and there will be no disruption to users, just as there was with Grindr. Third point. Unfortunately, when TikTok has appeared before Congress, whether it's before the House Energy and Commerce Committee or otherwise, it has not been candid, my friends. It has not been candid. First, TikTok said its data is not accessible to China-based ByteDance employees. False. China-based employees routinely access this data, even unbeknownst to employees of TikTok USA. In addition, TikTok said its data will not be weaponized and has not been weaponized against American citizens. Again, false. Published reports have shown that TikTok data, geolocation data, has been used to surveil American journalists who reported on problems with Chinese-based employees having access to American user data. Finally, last week, under the leadership of the chairman, chairwoman, and the ranking member, they brought up for consideration our bill before the House Energy and Commerce Committee. On the morning of that vote, TikTok delivered a push notification and a pop-up to thousands of users across the country. They used geolocation data targeting minor children to then force them to call congressional offices in order to contend, continue using the app. And in doing so, these children called and they asked the question, what is Congress and what is a congressman? This influence campaign illustrates the need for this bill. Thank you, and I yield back. Gentleman yields, and I'll uh, recognize uh, in the gentleman from New Jersey reserves. And I'll recognize the gentleman from Kentucky. I recognize uh, data privacy champion, Mr. Warren Davidson from Ohio for three minutes. I thank the gentleman, gentleman for Ohio yielding uh, time. Uh, I think it's important that we solve the right problem. The gentleman from New Jersey, uh, who isn't actually opposed to the bill, seems to have identified the real issue, which is data privacy. So I think it's important that we solve the correct problem. Uh, our problem is all these companies, social media, otherwise, your car, your phone, you name it, it's surveillance. Uh, the spying that goes on to American citizens does need to be addressed, and it should be addressed by the, the Energy and Commerce Committee. I've long pleaded with, with p members of both sides of the aisle to pass H.R. 4 to reclaim the privacy rights that are so deeply infringed in our country. And by avoiding that problem, we take away the energy and momentum to address the root issue. Frankly, the people uh, sponsoring this bill today claim that the real issue is ownership. But who owns this company? It's not 100% owned by ByteDance. 60% of it's owned by investors, including American investors. 20% are owned by uh, the founders. And 20% are owned by employees, over 7,000 employees. The company's headquarters is not in China. It's in Singapore. And the American user data isn't housed in China. It's housed in Texas controlled by a database owned by Oracle. The administration seems to believe that they can ban the export of Americans' sensitive data, not just on TikTok, but on all platforms, because they just issued an executive order banning the export. Now, I wish this was the bill that Pramila Jayapal and I have sponsored that we were moving. The Fourth Amendment's not for sale, uh, past judiciary, but its complement to prevent foreigners from buying it uh, would would also uh, address the privacy concerns. So if we think we can address the privacy concerns, what's left to address? Frankly, content moderation. Remember before Elon Musk bought the crime scene at Twitter? It was all a conspiracy theory that these algorithms were silencing and canceling people. You guys are crazy. No, when Elon Musk bought Twitter, he did keep it operating with 80% fewer employees, but what we found is a lot of the employees were trying to do content moderation, shape who sees what 
and how they see it. Which algorithms are used, how does it promote certain people and, and filter others. So really what's, what you're saying here is if you're not fully engaged with America's three letter agencies in content moderation, we plan to TikTok you. And this bill isn't just limited to TikTok. It's a coercive power that can be applied to others. Apps like Telegram, Tor, things that provide privacy uh, would be targeted by this bill. Perhaps Tether, one of the things that they can't control as a monetary system. And when you look at companies, if it enables one user to see content that isn't approved, it's subject to a $500 fine per user. 500 million. 30 seconds? 30 seconds. So this is, this is meant to be able to take out anything, including email, where it's one user sees it. So it could target an infinite number of companies, um, but not an infinite number of places. And so for that, I do ap applaud the work that was done to back off from the Dystopian Restrict Act. But this is essentially the a down payment on the Restrict Act. The Restrict Act, uh, it, it, I encourage everyone to look it up. But this is what the, it, the, the administration really wanted to do, what members of Congress on both sides of the aisle wanted to do, is to create a bigger surveillance state. And that's what the Intel Committee wants to do with Gentleman's FISA, time has expired. Is bigger. We have to shrink it and protect Fourth Amendment right to privacy. I yield. Reserve. Gentleman from Kentucky reserves. Now recognize the gentlewoman from Washington. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It is not true that this is a down payment on the Restrict Act, not interested in the Restrict Act. With that, I um, yield 30 seconds to the gentleman from Ohio, Mr. Latta. Gentlemen's recognized. For yielding. Mr. Speaker, the CEO of TikTok appeared before the Energy and Commerce Committee and admitted to me during questioning that ByteDance has access to the U.S. data. This should be an alarm to every TikTok user. There is no reason why the Chinese Communist Party should be in control of an app that can access information on a user's phone. And because companies who are owned or linked to the Chinese Communist Party are forced to comply with their laws, ByteDance and its employees are taking orders from this communist regime. This is not a ban, but provides communist-controlled ByteDance, the parent company of TikTok, a choice. If ByteDance divests their ownership of TikTok, TikTok would be available to its U U.S. users. I urge all my colleagues to support this legislation. I yield back the balance of my time. Reserve. Gentle lady reserves, and I'll recognize the gentleman from New Jersey. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I yield two minutes now to the Speaker Emeritus, Ms. Pelosi. The gentlewoman is recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I thank the gentleman for yielding and for his leadership on this very important issue, and I thank the distinguished chairwoman uh, of the Energy and Commerce Committee and associate myself with her remarks, as well as with Mr. Pallone's. I thank Mr. Christian Morphy and Mr. Gallagher, Chairman Gallagher of the Select Committee uh, on China for their great leadership, bringing this legislation forward uh, to the Committee of Jurisdiction, Legislative Jurisdiction. It, Mr. Chair, I have a few points to make, uh, and it's interesting to hear this respectful debate. First of all, this is not a ban on TikTok. I'm a grandmother of teenagers. I understand the entertainment value, the educational value, the communication value, the business value for some business on this. This is not an attempt to ban TikTok. It's an attempt to make TikTok better. Tick, tack, toe. A winner. A winner. And here's what I have to say. The people of China have come forth. The Tibetans have come forth and said on TikTok in China, they are suppressed. They cannot put their message out. Not only that, the Chinese government misrepresents the situation in Tibet. In Hong Kong, well, let me just tell you about Hong Kong. During the Taiwan election, TikTok, TikTok into Taiwan that the Uyghurs, of whom there is, on whom there is a genocide exercised by the Chinese government, they have told the people in Taiwan that the Uyghurs like that genocide. And, the, and they told them that the people of Hong Kong like the destruction of their democracy. They don't frame it that way, but that's their message. And again, suppressing the communication from Tibet. And then just people, yesterday on the steps, we heard from the Taiwan people, we, t the, we heard from the Tibetans, we heard from the Hong Kong, and we heard from a woman whose husband was arrested because of his communication with somebody with a shared view. So, 
this is controlled by the Chinese Communist government. But forgetting that, if you can, I can't, think of this. Ladies' the algorithm, time has the expired. Algorithm, the Chinese government will control the algorithm. They can change it any time. Does the gentleman into the from United New Jersey States, wish to allocate I urge more time? A yes vote. Gentleman from New Jersey reserves, and I'll recognize a gentleman from Kentucky. I recognize my friend and fellow colleague on the Judiciary Committee, Mr. Bishop from North Carolina, for four minutes. Gentleman's recognized for four minutes. Mr. Speaker, this is not the first time that re restricting speech has been pursued in the interest of national security. In fact, in five days' time, next Monday, I'll go to the Supreme Court for the first time I've attended uh, an, an oral argument in the case of Murthy versus Missouri, the case where agents of the, from the White House and the Department of Justice and other federal agencies embedded themselves with American social media companies to manipulate what could appear on social media, expression by the American people. Described by the lower court as the most massive attack on free speech in U.S. history. And even as that pens for a decision by the Supreme Court, Congress would, in this legislation, say, in effect, hold my beer. I don't use TikTok. I think it's ill-advised to do so. Members of this body are famous on TikTok, and I think that's unwise. But I respect the choices of 170 million users in the United States. In the international, uh, the Trump administration attempted to ban TikTok in 2020, and it was held that it couldn't do so in two court decisions because under the International Emergency Economic Powers Act are subject to the Berman Amendment, passed in 1988 by this body, to provide that in the interest of of dealing with hostile foreign powers, the president can do all sorts of things with respect to commerce, but cannot ban the free flow of information across international boundaries. I've heard that described as a gap in the law, but it's a feature, sir. It's not a bug. Th this change cannot be, this legislation cannot be described as other than receding from the Berman Amendment and that principle in American law which does not, by the way, did not emerge uh, from the brow of Representative Berman in 1988, but was, but was predicated on a much earlier principle of First Amendment law established in 1965 by the United States Supreme Court in the case Postmaster versus, or Lamont versus Postmaster General, which said that the American people have a right, a First Amendment right of access to foreign propaganda at first, it may be remarkable or strike one as odd to hear that, but that's because the proper relationship between government and citizen in the United States is that the citizen decides what to be exposed to and what ideologies to embrace and consider, and is always free to engage in expression, including across uh, international boundaries. That remains the prevailing constitutional law today, and it begs this question. How could it be that Congress should be working hard to, a, to devise a means to circumvent that principle, that prevailing principle of the First Amendment against the use of a particular means of expression by 170 million, million Americans? And isn't it ironic that the technical advisors in the construction of this legislation to design it so that it can get around le legislation challenges, including isolating litigation challenges to 180 days and only in the Court of Appeals of the District of Columbia. Those technical advisors are the same folks at the Department of Justice who devised that plan to embed agents of the Department of Justice and other federal agencies with, with social media platforms in the United States to restrict what Americans could say online. Mr. Speaker. America confronts a grave challenge in China, and it will not prevail by becoming more like it. I yield. The gentleman from Kentucky reserves, and I'll recognize the gentlewoman from Washington.
Mr. Speaker, I, I yield 30 seconds to the gentleman from Kentucky, Mr. Guthrie. The gentleman from Kentucky is recognized. Thank, thank for you, Mr. 30 Speaker. Seconds. I want to emphasize this bill does not ban TikTok. It simply would require the Chinese Communist Party affiliated ByteDance to sell TikTok and divest their interests. I was asked, does this just affect TikTok? And no, it's any foreign adversary or any app that is owned, controlled, or unduly influenced by any foreign adversary. We must protect our national security and help keep America's private data out of the hands of our foreign adversaries. I urge support of this bill, and I yield back. I reserve. The gentlewoman reserves, and I'll recognize the gentleman from New Jersey. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'll yield two minutes now to the gentlewoman from California, Ms. Eshoo, a member of the committee. The gentlewoman is recognized for two minutes. I thank the ranking member of the Energy and Commerce Committee. And Mr. Speaker, I rise today in support of H.R. 7521, the Protecting Americans from Foreign Adversary Controlled Applications Act. This bill will ensure the divestiture of TikTok from its People's Republic of China controlled parent company, ByteDance. And why is it essential for Congress to do this? Because the PRC controls ByteDance, and this presents a serious national security threat to our country. TikTok has 170 million plus U.S. users, and it collects tremendous amounts of sensitive data. They also collect substantial background data that may be proprietary, which may only be available to TikTok. The national security law of the PRC requires all Chinese organizations to, quote, support, assist, and cooperate with national intelligence efforts. Under this law, ByteDance could be compelled by the Chinese government to provide data on every American TikTok user. They can weaponize this data to exploit and manipulate Americans through surveillance and disinformation. This legislation separates TikTok's data, algorithms, and source code from ByteDance. And importantly, this bill does not ban TikTok something I do not support. I support divestiture because our first and most important responsibility as members of Congress is to defend our Constitution and defend the United States of America. The bill would also give Americans secure ownership of their data, including posts, photos, and videos, and give this administration and future administrations the authority to respond to future national security threats. For all these reasons, I urge all colleagues to vote for this legislation in the name of our national security. The, the gentleman from New Jersey's time has expired. I now recognize the gentleman from Kentucky. I yield four minutes to my good friend from Georgia, Ms. Marjorie Taylor Greene. The representative is recognized for four minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today as the only member of Congress that has ever been banned by social media. In, on January 2nd of 2022, Twitter banned me, banned my personal account on which I was campaigning for Congress, raising money, and using my free speech to inform the voters in my district they can vote for me. This was not by a company owned by China. This was by American-owned Twitter. This came on the heels of our own United States government working with big tech and working with social media companies to censor and ban Americans' free speech. I believe that this bill can cause future problems. It's opening Pandora's box, and I'm opposed to this bill. Most Americans don't trust the United States government because of our experience dealing with it. Never forget that the United States government also was the one that provided the Russia hoax to Americans. It also worked to ban Americans' free speech. It also has worked in so many ways to illegally warrantless spy on Americans through FISA. If we wanted to be serious about stopping a foreign adversary, if we wanted to be serious about stopping China, we would stop China from buying our U.S. farmland. 
We would, we would raise up our American energy independence. We would also stop the Green New Deal and not rely on China, who owns and operates 85% of the battery market worldwide. There are dangers that lie ahead in this. This is really about controlling Americans' data. And if we cared about Americans' data, then we would stop the sale of Americans' data universally, not just with China. There's some further issues. This is a Pandora's box. What's to stop Congress or the United States government in the future from forcing the sale of another social media company claiming that it's protecting Americans' data from foreign adversaries? I think we could see in the future another Russia, 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 and possibly force the sale of X as many members in this body claim that Elon Musk is altering the algorithms of X. By the way, it was Elon Musk's purchase of X that restored my social media account on Twitter and allowed me to have my free speech back on Twitter. There's also members of this body, the Democrats are claiming that election meddling can happen on social media. Well, we can never forget Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook. We can never forget the election meddling that happened there. And by the way, American-owned Facebook and Instagram is where most of the garbage, like the gender lies and the woke lies, exist. Many Americans and many teenagers believe awful things, and they don't just see them on TikTok. They see them on Facebook and Instagram, too. I don't think this will accomplish what the goal is to accomplish. So there's other concerns, I think, here, is that when the government moves into forcing the sale of, of uh, TikTok, who is going to buy it? That's the question that we should be asking. Who is going to buy it? Who will be the next to control the data of over 170 million Americans? Are we going to trust Mark Zuckerberg to control their data? I certainly don't. By the way, most of the time, my posts on Facebook are shadow banned, and I certainly don't have the reach on that social media account. I think that there's many other ways to protect data, and I think this, this body is capable of it. If the gentlelady's time it. has expired. I oppose the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The gentleman from Kentucky reserves. I recognize the gentlelady from Washington. Mr. Speaker, I yield one and a half minutes to the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Roy. The gentleman from Kentucky is recognized uh, Texas. from Texas is uh, recognized for a minute and a half. I thank the speaker. We are in a cold war with China, and some of my colleagues want to ignore this fact. We have legislation before us that is 12 pages long. The bill is not a ban. It forces foreign adversaries, including Chinese communists, to divest. The bill is not a bill of attainder, it's prospective, not retrospective. The bill does not violate the First Amendment. It focuses on conduct, not content. It requires both being controlled by a foreign adversary and conduct that itself is espionage. If you just had one alone, it might be debatable, as the gentleman from North Carolina or Senator Paul note, in that it might protect Americans' rights to seek out and obtain foreign propaganda. But again, that is not this case because we have and have as a trigger in the bill demonstrated national security conduct harm. To be clear, we've properly taken action at the device layer by banning Huawei and ZTE spy gear. We've taken action at the carrier level, prohibiting China Mobile and China Telecom from connecting to our networks based on a determination they are controlled by the CCP and a national security threat. We now need to take action at the application level when malign CCP control has been demonstrated, lest we render meaningless our past actions to protect the United States of America. We should ban CHICOM ownership of our farmland or drug manufacturing, but we should fight them here and ban the foreign ownership and control of American data and stop apologizing for the Chinese communists. I yield back. I reserve. The gentlewoman from Washington reserves, and I'll recognize the gentleman from Kentucky. I yield one minute to my friend on the other side of the aisle, Mr. Garcia from California. Gentlemen's recognized for one minute. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I have enormous respect for the efforts of my colleagues to focus on security and data protection, and I share many of their concerns. But I disagree with this approach and bill that could impact 170 million Americans who use TikTok. 
One third of all U.S. adults use the app, and millions of entrepreneurs and small business owners use the platform to support their family. And yes, just like every other social media platform, there is misinformation and privacy concerns on TikTok, and I share those. However, it's important that we don't treat TikTok differently than other platforms. If we're going to address this issue, we've got to take the same approach to all social media platforms. We can't just single out one. Now, I join many of my colleagues and the ACLU in voicing concern over the freedom of expression. Now, I'm a strong supporter of ensuring that TikTok remains an open marketplace, and there's no guarantee in this bill that there won't be an interruption of service that could lead to an end of this app. I don't think we fully appreciate the impact this is going to have, and for that, I'm a strong no. Thank you, and I yield back. Gentleman from Kentucky Reserves. I recognize the gentlewoman from Washington. Mr. Speaker, I yield 30 seconds to the gentleman from Indiana, Dr. Bouchon. The gentleman is recognized for 30 seconds. Mr. Speaker, one of the most important duties of the Constitution assigns to Congress is to protect the American people and to safeguard our national security. After hearing from national security experts last week, it is clear the prolific use of media platforms controlled by the Chinese Communist Party and other foreign adversaries poses a danger to our country. I am grateful to my bipartisan colleagues for moving this legislation, showing we will take action to protect the American people, their personal data, and security from foreign interference and manipulation. We took an oath to do so. Thank you, and I yield back. The gentle lady reserves. I now recognize the gentleman from Kentucky. I now yield. Uh, one minute to my friend on the other side of the aisle from California, Ms. Kamlager Dove. The gentle lady is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to oppose H.R. 7521. Banning TikTok is an insufficient Band-Aid solution to the genuine national security concerns the app raises and exposes. The bill seriously undermines civil liberties by essentially banning a platform that 150 million Americans use to engage in free speech and expression. A statewide TikTok ban has already been paused by a federal judge on First Amendment grounds. Even without TikTok, the PRC could still be able to conduct influence operations on other social media platforms and obtain sensitive U.S. user data through hacking or data brokers. Finally, this bill would greatly expand the executive's authority to ban tech companies with zero congressional oversight. I cannot sign a blank check to some future president who would easily and dangerously weaponize this legislation to profit and silence. Creatives, artists, content creators, and businesses in my district will get caught in the crossfire of this bill and deserve better than federal overreach as a substitute for a thoughtful and incisive solution Ladies, time to this has complicated expired. national security challenge. Thank you. I yield back. Reserve. Gentleman from Kentucky Reserves, I recognize a gentlewoman from Washington. Mr. Speaker, I yield 40 seconds to the gentlewoman from Iowa, Ms. Henson. The ladies recognized for 40 seconds. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today in support of this simple bill. It forces TikTok to cut ties with the CCP or lose American users. The day after we introduced our bill, TikTok went into panic mode. They lied to their users, saying Congress was going to ban TikTok using young kids as political pawns. TikTok's growth stunt proved our point. What if on election day, TikTok sent out an alert saying our elections were canceled? We must act now. Today, we're sending a message to the CCP that we are going to deflate the 140 million spy balloons that they have installed on American phones. We must act and pass this bill today. Thank you. I yield back. The gentlelady reserves. Reserve. I now recognize the gentleman from Kentucky. Reserve. Gentleman from Aye. Kentucky reserves. I now recognize the gentlelady from Washington. Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to yield one minute to the gentlewoman from Florida, Ms. Kamek. The gentle lady from Florida is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today we take a stand against the Chinese Communist that. Party and their efforts to turn content creators in America into foot soldiers for the CCP. You know, we aren't banning a company as the high-paid lobbyist for ByteDance, which is owned by China, would lead you to believe. We aren't infringing on constitutionally protected speech or growing the size of government. All we're saying is break up with the Chinese Communist Party. As a constitutional conservative, I don't want my government 
or big tech to have unfettered access to my private data. So why in the hell would we want and allow the Chinese Communist Party to have access to our private data? The CCP is an adversary of the United States, and this legislation narrowly, thoughtfully, and directly addresses the national security threat and protecting Americans' data and, by extension, their First Amendment rights. Because let us not pretend for one second that TikTok is not infringing on our amendment, our First Amendment rights. I would say that this bill, as Representative Roy from Texas said, this bill is about conduct, not General content. General lady's time has expired. Conduct, not content. And there is no restriction mentioned on content the in this bill. The gentle lady's time has but expired. But I will mention, Does Mr. Speaker, lady I will from mention Washington Reserve? that the espionage is not covered or protected as one of the, the five tenets of the First Amendment. The gentle lady is no longer Amendment. recognized. The gentle uh, woman from Washington, you have a minute and three quarters time left, and I now recognize the gentleman from Kentucky. Uh, right there. I'd like to now yield one minute to my good friend from Arizona, Mr. Schweikert. The gentleman is recognized for one minute. Um, and thank you, Mr. Speaker Pro Tem, and to my friends, I actually am about to try to make everyone mad. Yay! I actually believe data is a private property right. It belongs to you as an American citizen. The problem with our design here, it's really well-meaning, but it doesn't get at the structural problem. So you have an entity over here, they divest. What makes them not then take the data, sell it to a data broker, and it gets washed and ends up still in the bad actor's hands. You gotta understand, there's even articles out in this week of even our own three-letter agencies buying their data now from data brokers instead of doing the tracking. We need to think dramatically more globally. Your data is a private property right. That will be the only way we end up protecting ourselves from bad actors and sometimes and even our own selves. time has expired. And with that, I yield back. Gentleman from Kentucky Reserves, I believe he has three minutes. Three and a half minutes available. And I'll recognize the gentlewoman from Washington. Mr. Speaker, I yield 30 seconds to the gentleman from Michigan, Mr. Wahlberg. Gentleman is recognized for 30 seconds. Mr. Speaker, last March, when I asked the, uh, about America's data being stored on and accessed by China, TikTok CEO stated under oath that it was not accessible by the CCP. However, this statement was a lie. As her own internal recording said, everything is seen in China. H.R. 7521 gives TikTok and similar acts six months to divest from their parent company, ByteDance. It's their choice. TikTok needs to decide whether they value their users or their ties to the Chinese Communist Party more. Simple as that. Vote for this bill. I yield back. The gentleman yields, and the gentle lady from Washington yields. Reserves. Uh, gentleman from Kentucky will be recognized. I reserve. The gentleman from Kentucky reserves, and I'll recognize the gentle lady from Washington. I reserve. Gentle lady from Washington reserves. Is, is, um, well, is the gentle lady prepared to close? I'm prepared to close. You, you have no other speakers? I have one more speaker, and we'd like to close. So I'm going to wait. I'm going to reserve until you are ready to, um, until your time has expired. <laughs> You're, well, are it's you prepared a, to close? Um, I'm prepared to close. Okay. It's so the gentle lady has no further speakers. I the gentle lady speaker. from Washington has the right to close. Yes. Okay. All right. I'd I'll like to close. close. The gentleman from Kentucky is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I know the other side is sincere, and we've not questioned that here today, and I won't question their sincerity. I, in fact, I think they've identified at least three problems that we have in America. Moral decay of our society, invasion of Americans' privacy, and our competitiveness with China. But in this case, their cure is worse than the diseases. You know, there are ways to, to get at these root problems. We just haven't taken it upon ourselves to address those root problems with, with actual legislative solutions that have been put forth here in Congress. For instance, 
Mr. Warren Davidson's The Fourth Amendment is Not for Sale Act would put a strong stake in the ground to protect Americans' privacy, whether it's from our own government or some foreign governments. That is the kind of thing we need. We need warrants in the FISA program. You shouldn't be able to, our government shouldn't be able to spy on Americans without a warrant, yet they are. Let's bring that to the floor and vote on it. These are the kind of cures we need, not the bill that's offered here today. The bill that's offered here today, even though I know it's offered genuinely, it could also be named the Facebook Protection and Enhancement Act. Because it's not the American people are going to benefit most from this, it will be Facebook. Their stock is going to go up if this bill should pass the Senate. Now, what are some ways that we could improve this bill? Well, it should at least have a sunset. I mean, that's the only reason we're able to debate whether FISA uh, should have warrants in it, because it sunsets. And what have we observed? FISA's been abused. That's my concern with this TikTok ban. It will be abused. If it's just banning TikTok and ByteDance and, and uh, copies of that, why does it need to be 13 pages long? And I know they say it doesn't ban it, it forces divestiture of the company. This sounds like when American companies try to do business in third world countries and a dictator says, well, you can do business here, you just got to give me your company and now you can continue to do business. We wouldn't let another country take over Ford Motor Company for selling Ford cars in their, in their country. Yet that's what we're wanting to do here. And again, you know, this, this is a cure that is worse than the disease. Who's going to be prosecuted by this bill? Is it ByteDance or TikTok? Will they be taken to court? No. I mean, they're the target of this, but how do you elicit or effect a ban on them? by prosecuting Americans. The only way you can ban TikTok and the other companies from being here is to say what this bill says, which is we will bring civil action, the government will bring a civil action suit against you if you so much as host them here. If you have an app store that allows them to be here, you're an American or an American company and you will be the target of this bill. Those are the only people who can be pursued under this bill. And I know it's in, in order to go after TikTok, or so they say. Well, I would just close by saying that, you know, we're sitting here with phones made in China. We're wearing suits made in China. We drove cars here with chips that are made in China. And they're our foreign adversary. And by golly, we're going to do something about it. What are we going to do? We're going to tell Americans they can't put a piece of software on their computer. They can't go to certain websites that the president designates. So I urge my colleagues to oppose this well-intentioned bill because it will have bad consequences, and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back the balance of his time, and I'll recognize the gentle lady from Washington. Mr. Speaker, I yield as, uh, such time as remains to the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Crenshaw. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The gentleman has one minute and 15 seconds. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to address all of my uh, colleagues who I think are confused about the First Amendment, confused about the nature of TikTok, and confused about the intentions of the Chinese Communist Party. Let me explain this really simple. TikTok is owned by ByteDance. ByteDance is in China. And when you're in China, you have to do whatever the Chinese Communist Party says you have to do. That's according to the National Intelligence Law passed in 2017. If they want you to spy for them, you will spy for them. That's how that works. They have a board member from the Chinese Communist Party on ByteDance. You wouldn't allow a radio tower owned by the Chinese to be put up right in the middle of Washington, D.C., and then allow it to just put out Chinese propaganda. You probably complain about that. That's exactly what TikTok can be used for because millions of Americans are addicted to it. They see it, and the Chinese can, can can absolutely manipulate those algorithms. The First Amendment does not give the Chinese Communist Party the right to American data or the right to manipulate the minds of Americans. That would be a really weird interpretation of the First Amendment. The primary counterarguments to this bill seem to be as shallow as, you know, well, it doesn't do everything I want and Facebook's really mean and I don't want them to make money. So what, then that means you owe Chinese access to all of our data and access to manipulate the minds of Americans? I don't think so. 
This is a very specific bill, very specifically tailored. It does not harm American companies or American individuals. You know it. You got to read it. Pass this bill. And I yield back. All time for a debate is completed. The question is, Will the House suspend the rules and pass the bill H.R. 7521 as amended? Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. no. In the opinion of the chair, two-thirds being in the affirmative. Mr. Mr. Speaker. What purpose does the gentleman from Kentucky rise? I request the yeas and nays. The gentleman from Kentucky requests the yeas and nays. Those favoring a vote by the yeas and nays will rise. A sufficient number having risen, the yeas and nays are ordered. Members will record their votes by electronic device. This is a 15-minute vote.
Ministre. On this vote, the yeas are 352, the nays are 65. One present, two thirds being in the affirmative. The rules are suspended. The bill is passed, and without the objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. Okay. Pursuant to Clause 8 of Rule 20, the unfinished business is the question on suspending the rules and pass Senate 1278, which the clerk will report by title. Senate 1278, an act to designate the federal building located at 985 Michigan Avenue in Detroit, Michigan, as the Rosa Parks Federal Building and for other purposes. The question is, will the bill suspend the rules and pass the bill? So many as are in favor say aye. Those opposed, no. In the opinion of the chair, two-thirds being in the affirmative, the rules are suspended, the bill is passed, and without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. For what purpose does the gentleman from New York seek recognition? Madam Speaker, I ask unanimous consent that when the House adjourns today, it adjourn to meet at 11 a.m. on Friday, March 15, 2024. And further, when the House adjourns on that date, it adjourned to meet at noon on Tuesday, March 19, 2024, for morning hour debate and 2 p.m. for legislative business. Without objection. Is it is the mic on my The House will be in order. Members, please take your conversations to the rear or the side gallery. The chair will now entertain requests for one minute speeches. What purpose does the gentlewoman from Arizona seek recognition? I ask unanimous consent to address the House for one minute. Without objection, the gentlewoman is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to recognize someone whose service will be felt by future generations.